Welcome back to Mid Synapse Podcast. Today we will invent new medical condition. Maybe one person can be infected with influenza many times along the year. So we are on the shelf of uh, spreading influenza and it's, it's a winter, so it's a high peak for influenza. So we are so glad to announce about our expert today, Dr. Revolution, general practitioner. We will discover all details about influenza and all precautions that we have to be perceived with to prevent the spreading influenza. Dr. Revolution, welcome on board. Thank you so much, Diana, once again. And yes, today we're talking about influenza. It's an important topic because right now we are in the season where influenza is slowly tend to be rising because of the weather. Usually we say, you know, because of the cold climate. So I hope like this will be a very good lesson and good uh, educational podcast for people who might be suffering from influenza, who might be thinking about vaccinations, who might have a question whether I have an influenza or is it just some common cold. So I hope you guys will enjoy the podcast. Yes, exactly. It will be very valuable for all people and children and elder and, and everyone. So, Dr. Revolution, we will start from introduction. Uh, could you please provide a brief overview of influenza? So, influenza basically is what we commonly call its flu, no? So flu, basically, it's a viral illness that usually affects the upper respiratory tract area or even lower respiratory tract in some cases, like from ranging from your nose, from your throat to your lungs as well. So usually influenza is caused by influenza virus itself. There are many kinds of influenza virus. So these viruses are responsible for the severity of illness. Some of the strain of the virus can make you more sick than other strain of the virus. Dr. Revolution, it's a very critical section, the transmission and symptom of influenza. So how is influenza transmitted and what are the common symptoms for influenza? So influenza is usually, uh, it transfers to respiratory droplets, we say. So usually like if a person is infected with influenza, like let's say if I'm infected with influenza and like you're in front of me, so if I talk to you, the droplets sometimes that we do not see by our eyes can sometimes, uh, you know, reach to the other person. Even when talking or even if you're not talking, like sometimes when coughing, sneezing. So the droplets can fly around and infect the other person. So that is what we call like direct transmission. And there are also like uh, less common ways that it can get transmitted. Like, you know, for example, let's say that you happen to see a person who just sneezed and there is some droplets that's on the table and you mistakenly happen to touch that table and maybe you touch your nose and eyes so that way also indirectly also you know people can contract uh, influenza virus so when we talk about the symptoms symptoms can range according to the individuals some people might have flu and not have symptoms at all and get recovered by themselves like you know in a certain amount of time but some people can experience mild symptoms like cough colds fever muscle ache, body pain, and in some cases, like, you know, younger children tend to have, like, diarrhea, abdominal upset, uh, gastrointestinal upset, and all these things. So the symptoms really vary. So the basic symptoms that we usually have are, like, cough, high-grade fever, muscle pain, joint pain, headaches, fatigue, feeling of tiredness, and for children, usually gastrointestinal upset as well. The revolution in the section will have a risk factor. It may be opposite answer of, uh, or against all people's expectations. So what are the risk factors for severe influenza? So actually, we are all at risk of developing flu. So you should always take precautions. But there are some certain populations, some certain people who can be at higher risk compared to the normal people. So usually these are like, you know, children who are less than five years of age because they do not have a proper immunity developed as of that moment or elderly population more than 65 or some pregnant uh, people uh, can have also higher risk. Other people, other things are like, you know, obesity, meaning like if someone's BMI is more than 40. So there also has been an association that people with higher BMI more than 40 are more in chances of having the infections. So other things are like, you know, for example, let's say you have a diabetes or you have some kidney disease or any kind of chronic conditions. So your risk of developing the influenza becomes higher. So these are the people at risk. 
So, Dr. Revolution, as it's viral infection, so uh, vaccination is very vital for preventing influenza. So, can you mention uh, the role of vaccination to prevent the influenza? So, vaccination plays, uh, you know, vaccination has been very much effective in a lot of diseases, not only influenza, but especially for influenza, vaccination, what it does is that it gives you the protection plus as well as it reduces the chances of your hospitalization or mortality even. meaning like you know the chances of someone dying from the influenza it reduces that chances very drastically like oh, we can say almost like 50 to 70 percent so vaccination usually we advise people to take vaccination like for all if the, someone is above the month of six six month old we usually can give vaccinations Vaccinations are usually given annually, but also depending on the conditions uh, that you have also. So usually people who are at high risk, they should definitely have a vaccination. So the vaccination around the time of, you know, winter, so meaning like September, October, these times are the best times to have vaccination before the flu season starts kicking in. So people at high risk, like we talked about, like children, elderly people, pregnant people who are living in a close space like you know chances of getting transmitting the infection is higher people with high bmi people with comorbidities these people should definitely have a vaccination to have a better protection and when we talk about prevention like uh, the way you can prevent is basically like you know how does it transmit understanding that transmission usually happens directly or indirectly through respiratory droplets so the first thing that you can do is like as soon as you start developing symptoms of influenza or flu you can self-isolate sometimes you know so that way you know you can prevent the, the chances of transmission the second thing that you can do is like we said do not try to keep on touching your eyes nose mouth or if you're touching make sure you, you're always washing your hands before you're touching your nose eyes then also like you know like we did in covid times Putting on a mask and personal protective equipments also helps contain the transmission of the infection. Other things that we can do is like from a community level, vaccination drives to different areas, like especially in school areas, because usually summers the schools are usually closed, and when it's winter the school is open and the children are gathered in a place. So that puts them at a very high risk. So, you know, from a school point of view, from the government point of view, they should work together to, you know, vaccinate these people at high risk. Other people are like, you know, in old age cares, nursing homes, or if you're traveling for pilgrim, like, you know, people go to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia for Makkah. So in there, like, usually they come back and they usually have like cough and cold. And that's now, I think that's why now they have mandated that you should have a flu vaccination when you're traveling there. You should have a proof that you should have a flu vaccination. So these are all the ways, you know, that we can prevent um so every every little steps like from individual going up to the community going up to the government level you know we can play a very vital role in preventing and containing the spread of influenza virus so dr revolution that's about pre-infection so post-infection what are the most common treatment options for uh, influenza so when we talk about the treatment, uh, like like I said in the beginning of the podcast, like most of the influenza uh, people affected with influenza, even without doing anything, they tend to recover very well for most of the people. Some people, if they have mild illness, like, you know, cough, cold, fever, a little bit of body pain, we can give them like, you know, what we call uh, supportive management. So supportive management, meaning IV fluids, maybe paracetamol, painkiller cough syrup you know depending on the symptoms they have just to limit the symptoms because over the time slowly the virus will go away but for some people like those especially at high risk they might develop severe infections that can even lead to hospitalizations so for these people like you know there are people at high risk there are antiviral medications that are there that we can prescribe like some of the one of the common antiviral medication in Dubai is called Tamiflu. This uh, Tamiflu tablets this is an antiviral tablet that can be prescribed like for people with high risk or people who are presenting with very severe symptoms. So treatment wise, depending on the kind of symptoms, it has to be very individualized, ranging from home isolation to hospital or ICU admission as well. So it really varies the treatment. Great. 
So, Dr. Evolution, I want to ask about complication. Are there any uh, severe complications for influenza? And if so, please mention some of potential complications. So, like we said, influenza is a virus that can infect your respiratory tract. So, respiratory tract meaning from here going all the way to your lungs. So, complication-wise, it can have a lot of complications. Like sometimes if there is throat pain, because there is a tube connecting between your throat and the ears, so sometimes the throat pain, it can also cause ear infections. So sometimes you can have pneumonia. Sometimes you can have, like if the infection very much spreads out all over your blood, you can have something called sepsis and sepsis can lead to multi-organ failures, like failure of the kidneys, you know. Uh, so complication wise, it depends. There are a lot of complications if it is not controlled in time. So that is why it is very important that as soon as you start experiencing symptoms, you check up as soon as you can. So that way you'll be guided on how to manage your symptoms and how to prevent complications. And one of the best way to prevent complications is through vaccinations. Because what vaccination has shown is that the vaccination has been around for a very long time. So the vaccination, what it has shown is that there are data that show that vaccination reduces your chance of hospitalization meaning like you know of course if you're not going to be hospitalized meaning your chances of recovery are still going to be better also it also reduces your chance of mortality why does it reduce the mortality because it prevents the complications severe complications from happening so vaccination is one of the way also to prevent the complications Great. And finally, Dr. Revolution, if you like to add some tips and the tricks for all people, because we are on the shelf of winter and that's mean uh, spreading a lot of infections. So uh, are there any tips and the tricks to enhance the immunity? So some of the tips and tricks I would say is that first thing, since now you know what is the way to prevent uh, flu, you have to start applying this to you, not only to you, also around the people. Uh, also the people around you, I mean. So like frequent hand washing, you know, you can get the alcohol everywhere. You can just wash it whenever you feel like. If somebody is coughing and having colds, say, okay, hi, I'm sorry. I have to maintain my distance with you for the meantime, right? If you feel like, you know, if you're working as a healthcare professional, if you're treating the patients with cough and colds because it's a flu season, wear a mask, put on the gloves. So this will help you prevent your infections. Also, what you can do is like, you know, in, in areas like offices or in uh, hospitals, frequent cleaning, meaning like, you know, you can tell your housekeeping staff that uh, the cleaning should be done quite frequently. So that way, every time there is some kind of droplets spreading around, that can be contained immediately. So take precautions. The only way to be safe from the virus is by taking these precautions. And another important thing is taking the vaccination. So if you are having currently flu symptoms, do not take vaccinations. And after you have vaccinations, it doesn't mean that you go around in front of people who are coughing and say like, I am vaccinated, nothing's going to happen to me. So after you have vaccination, it takes at least two weeks for the vaccination to work. So that's why, you know, still maintain the distance. Take the prevention, preventative measures, but at the same time, take vaccination so that your chances of getting severe influenza becomes quite less. Great. At the end, I need to thank you so much, Dr. Revolution, for being on my side today and giving all people uh, valuable insights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Diana, for inviting again and have a great day. Thank you.